Hello everyone, Kurt Olfer here and welcome back to another episode from Whole Photo Labs. Today we continue on with Fiori's uh, Sword in One Hand and we are once again going to be looking at two plays uh, that I believe go hand in hand and you know again you see uh, the start of something right here and then it goes into completion of something here uh, within the second image. Uh, consistently the Maestro does that right there and I, I believe that that may have, again for the period of time that we're in you know, how do you convey exactly what you want to do to somebody other than having one image that can stem off of others uh, than this right here? Uh, you know, of course, Fiori's not, this is not unique just to Fiori, but I personally like this because one of the other things I really like, especially about this manual, is I can look at ways in which one play can become another play with another play right here. And you have all of them on this grid square right here, which is kind of fun to kind of hopscotch around. And we're going to look at that today. So with that being the case here, let's take a look at it. Okay, so this week right here, we're going to be going into two plays once again that once that, that, that give continuance of, of a concept that we're going off of here. Um, they work hand in hand here, uh, and they also go into, uh, I think, an opportunity play of going into the, uh, the full Nelson, uh, but in this case right here, the sword becomes the, the mechanism that constrains people. And it's all about turning people here and attacking the anatomy in which they have, okay? So the images that we're talking about are here. They're going to flash across the screen here, the first one and the second one. And you can already see how pretty obvious and evident in how these two may work together. Um, not very big, much of a surprise right here. The big part about this right here that I think that is very important is, in this case, we're actually getting the person to spin over their front leg and not just, have, not just attacking the voltastabulae of the structure here to turn their body. But in this case right here, we want to, we want to make it so they push over and make them stumble and fumble to the other side. Either way of it all, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And I'm also gonna talk about the second image as well, about how what I think is actually happening right there, because I, there's a couple things that are very important here to note. Um, and I think that right here, that, that second one is actually simulating a drag and a blade rake and, and, um, and, and choke. So, to go to the first one right here, which we're showing right here. Off of this right here, we make the same type of the same universal pairing, strike comes in, boom, in the space, I have this up here. Off of this, I have access. Now, this is one thing right here that is not said in the manuscript, but it does make me wonder here because we've talked about real estate up to this point. His hand is viable right here. So off this covering mechanism, I'm I close to the, met, to the metal of the sword or to the forte of the sword. If, I, if I'm close to either of these, I have access to this a lot, a lot more readily. If I make it to the point of this, it's probably gonna bite in. So we're probably talking mezzospada as far as a covering mechanism right here. I just press into this blow. And then I'm gonna, from here, I'm gonna pass and I'm gonna grab the elbow. We've talked oftentimes about make them eat the elbow, okay? So I'm gonna pop up here and push this up and over, and this is where he says, I can strike you with the sword. The sword is still up. And anatomically, that makes a lot of sense, because ultimately right here, there's natural body armor in the, in the chest cavity right here. The neck has got nothing. The eyes are what are what stresses right here. We know that from the first portions of opera Zari about attacking the eyeballs and other things like this right here. So, but the point up here in the face, it's either A gonna be attacking his eye, or I can plunge it into his neck, which is, a, which is one of the areas which we've learned in Dagger is a viable spot, a really nasty spot to hit somebody. No question about that. So regardless of this, the guy or gal is striking in, okay? So he strikes it in me, boom, off of this right here. I'm gonna push up the arm and I'm gonna rotate with this. So in this case right here, I can keep the blade on. He doesn't even have to move his arm here. I can just keep this blade here, and I can create a break that puts the sword here in place as I push him up and over into that kind of concept. Because I'm stepping into this, this gives me the oomph to really give a nice shove to push him over into that direction. So going pop, boom, over top here, and I have the possibility of making him go over. If I don't like this, I can go low, I can thrust high. Either way, it's viable to be able to do whatever we need to do in that, okay? So that's the first portion of the display. Off of this, he's, you can already tell how I am being off balance on this. By him being off balance, you can already tell he's pushed over this way. He's gotta regain his feet. So however Connor does that, as I push him over, he's either gonna turn or he's gonna fumble or he's gonna something. I'm gonna keep, but my blade is right here. So as I push him over, I'm gonna fall into him and get to the back of his neck, okay? This position right here, now this is not what's shown in the manuscript. In the manuscript right here, you see him hit this leg is off, and what I think is happening here is he is pulling this guy back. He is simulating, I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna bring this guy down to the ground here and cause whatever. One of the big things that's very important about this is where my legs are, 
are going to signify how he falls. That's a big part about how I'm going to throw you. I can, yes, cut his throat, but if he's in armor, I'm not cutting anything. I am setting him up for a throw. Okay? So if he moves a little bit closer right here, shot the zip, boom, up, turn. I'm here with it. Now, with my legs being, I'm still squared up, I still have a bend, I still have my senio stance here. And as I yank him, so I pull him and say he rolls into my right shoulder. Well, that's where both the thought leg goes this way, and I can throw him over my right leg. However, if he's in this position here and he doesn't make the image with the legs up in the air, which again is just an image, if he pulls back and say he goes to my left shoulder, I can pass and then throw him over this way. Regardless of what's happening right here, the important piece about that play is being able to employ your mezzavolta or your volta stabile to be able to throw the person off or put them down to the ground after the fact. Or you just press it up nice and close to them. Either way, it doesn't matter. This is a really bad day for him, and it, it doesn't necessarily matter what he's, he's going to be doing here because you have a sharp edge to the throat. And if it's an armor, that allows a lot more torque and turn. Okay? With cross guards, I can put this into visors, I can put this into his jaw, which is going to talk about the same kind of concept we talked about before here. In fact, I'm going to have to do I'm going to have him stand in front right here. I'm just going to assume, I'll take towards the camera, please. Put it towards me. Okay. If I put this right here, I have the blade to the throat, I have spots where I can steer and turn him. I can steer and turn him into the shoulder. I can steer and turn him this way. I'm utilizing the edge to, to steer him. He's all stuck, and now I can turn him however I need to go. Okay? It doesn't necessarily matter. And that's a big part about this. So again, it's just the source of the back of the throat here, but we also learned about all the throat mechanisms and pressure points in there. I can threaten his eye and just pop an eye. Not going to do that right here where we're not wearing any protection. But I can pop this up right here. I can put this into his shoulder, the spot where you put, an, put a sword in armor. The person to the back right there, there are options to make them comply. Okay? I might be able to bring him down to a knee. Bring him one more time. By putting this sword right here, I might put this into his shoulder and bring him down this way. Because I put the cross guard into his shoulder, his shoulder joint. Now, he's not fighting right now, but the reality is if I gave him a good jerk, crush his trachea, and then move him into the spot, or if he's in a helmet, it doesn't necessarily matter. And before we have that conversation, we know that Fiore is not opposed to having blades on the edge of the swords because of the swords we see in armor later on, which show them being sharpened off in that way. So it would not be very hard for me to imagine that he's got cross guards right here that are either pointy and spiky, like a, um, like a rondelle, or blades themselves. Doesn't necessarily matter here in, in that regard. But regardless of this, the whole point of this play is that basically we're getting to the back. It's by being, being the, the sword to one side, strike comes in, boom, up and over the elbow, shift forward the thrust, and now I'm not right here, and I can control and steer him however I need to. If he starts turning to my left side, I turn him over this blade. If he goes in the side that the leg is forward into me, I can step back and turn into it. I also have one more thing here that's really nasty. I can put my knee into the back right here, drop him down so that he takes the knee, ready? Mm -hmm. drop the knee here, and bring him to the ground right here where I control him. All sorts of things from the back that allow us to contain and constrain the person who wants the sword is placed behind him. And that concludes what we got here for these two plays. So as you can see with the video here, again, these, these two plays work in conjunction with one another. I mean, he states how you can get to someone's backside here. And also, you know, the second portion of the play right here, uh, I show some extra pieces here that, again, just as me adding in all the stuff that he has talked about when it comes down to the effective strikes that were listed within the Abrazari section in the very beginning. Uh, the big part that I really, really, really like about this right here is that essentially, because you have this, you know, this, this continuation of all the things that are happening here, we see ways, yet another way to be able to get in on somebody, uh, which allows you to be able to turn the person into a different direction. Uh, a big part for me on this right here that I like is it also it talks about the anatomical considerations of pushing somebody up and over and making them eat their arm uh, of the lead leg. Uh, we saw that within uh, other manuscripts right here where we push across the body where we, again, it's turning the person over and making them trip over themselves. 
uh, in that form or fashion. And it allows for us here to be able to kind of get that axis right there to get them so we break their sunyo stance and then are able to address and attack them as necessary. Uh, that elbow push and everything else is really super important. Uh, the other part too, I think is great about this is that, you know, again, if they, if they if they push this way, they come right back down. Well, now I, again, what do I do is I go right back into the place of the first section of the sword in one hand um, in either form or function. The other part that I think is very interesting about this is, is again, is, is the blade hug to the back of the throat. Um, a, a big part about this right here for me, when it comes down to uh, Fiori's images right here is again, we're, we're seeing a continuation concept that was later was done earlier uh, with the full Nelson uh, against somebody. How do you get some if they're, if they're put against the wall, or whatnot? And again, we're putting somebody into a position right here, but it's a much more lethal one, and they may or may not be able to, to do anything about it. If the person's in armor, you have a chance of being able to deal with it, but if they're not, you're pretty much, as you saw, being able to steer this. Now, I made a comment there about the swords that you see in Fiori's manuscript, and he talked about there's two that he depicts within the armor sections that, to me, are very important to note on this because even though they might be armored swords, I can't believe for a second that you do not have other, you know, weaponized uh, cross guards and quillins. Um, you can see them all over the place. I mean, there's there's so many repercussions that there's hooks, there's wedged in lines right here. And just those alone right there are great pressure points to be able to steer and turn somebody beyond just covering when crossing with the sword. And I think that's a big part about this that perhaps Fiori is not showing in this, but would not have a problem with this because he already told you about how to attack people in different directions with their fingers, the dagger, and etc. So again, that's going to do it for this right here. And again, I'm kind of curious what people have to think about both these plays right here and also about, you know, when it comes down to the sword hug in the very end, the steering of people in different directions, you're using that cross guard, using the, the, the blade point. Um, some people might be thinking, well, why don't you just cut the throat? You got to remember, this is the age of ransoming. If I want to ransom you, I, if I if I cut your throat, well, I'm not going to be really I'm not going to be able to ransom you in that case. So there's a lot of this right here where it might be better for me to pain compliance and turn you down into a position where I can take that ransom rather than just going out and, and finishing the task right there. Um, so that that's my thoughts as far as that goes right here. So regardless of that right here, again, everyone, please um, thank you so much for tuning in to my viewers and uh, my viewers and subscribers. As always, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your views. Um, if you're new to the channel here, don't forget to, hit, to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can see when new content drops and arrives. Uh, we'd love to have you on this journey with the 14th century uh, manuscript of arms um, and you know, be able to grow this channel, which is not possible without viewers like you. So thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, to, uh, until next time, everybody, as always, please stay safe out there, train well, and fight on. I'll see you all soon.